Well, brothers and sisters, like I said, today we are starting on the second part of our series on the nature and character of God. And today we are looking at God's holiness and perfection. We'll be looking at Deuteronomy, the beginning of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verses 1 to 4, and uh, the book of Revelation by John, the apostle, uh, verse, chapter 4, verses 6b to 8. But as before, we need to be reminded, of course, of the nature and character of our God. Uh, who is like the Lord our God? And if you remember last week, we had a beautiful infographic that I was able to reproduce uh, due to permission from uh, Karen Sori. Uh, thank you so much to her. And uh, you can check out her work in the infographic Bible. It's a beautiful, beautiful work. And I would really encourage you uh, to check that out. But if you remember, we had this, uh, this chart that we were, uh, we were looking at. And surrounding the outside of the chart is the reality of God's love. God's love. God's love which encompasses all that God is. It is uh, the only way that we can truly understand all that flows out of God. All the other aspects of his character. And then the second part of that chart was in sort of the middle part. There is, uh, there is another circle with, on the top, one half uh, that is in dark blue, and on the bottom, another half that is in dark green. And those uh, indicate on the top God's nature, uh, what theologians would call his incommunicable characteristics or attributes, those things that we can never have like his omnipresence and his omnipotence, that is, his, uh, the reality that he is everywhere at once, and he knows all things. And then on the bottom, in the green, we have his character, those attributes that are things that, that we can grow in, those things that we can uh, have to some degree or another, and so uh, that is those two parts, those three parts of this chart. But then you'll notice also in the middle, there is this uh, orangey brown ring, which indicates uh, that this is about God's, uh, the reality that God is holy and perfect. God is holy and perfect. And so we need to explore that reality today. And so first we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 1 to 4. In it we read these words, Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. This is our God, and this particular passage, Deuteronomy, speaks to God's perfection. The reality that he does no wrong, that all his works are perfect, that he is just and righteous for us. We need to look also at how he is holy, and the two are very much interlinked. They are tied together big time. We can read about this in many places of the scripture, uh, particularly in Revelation chapter 4 uh, and also in Isaiah chapter 6. There are two passages there uh, that are kind of parallel to each other in some ways that really stand out. Revelation chapter 4, with John receiving his vision, we read these words. 
In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The fact that it is repeated there, that holy, 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 is an important thing. Now, uh, the New Testament, of course, was written in Greek, uh, but in Hebrew, where, where John would have gotten his sort of ideas from, in that passage from Isaiah, for example, that we'll look at a little bit later, um, in Hebrew, there's no such thing as uh, the sort of construction that we have in language of... Um, good, better, best, or uh, neat, neater, neatest. There's, there's not something like that. And so in order to emphasize that something was the most, <clears throat> then uh, scripture writers and people who spoke Hebrew would say the word like once or twice or three times to emphasize just how uh, much something was. Right? So when the biblical writers write holy, 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 they are saying that God is the holiest that could possibly be conceived of. And this is very important for us. Because when we look at the, the meaning of the word holy, <clears throat> and we understand that God is the holiest, then we understand more about who he is for us. Uh, the famous theologian and Christian writer, uh, Reformed theologian R.C. Sproul, says that the term holy has two common references. The first and primary meaning of the term refers to God's otherness. The sense in which he is different from everything else in the created universe. The secondary meaning has to do with his purity, his perfection in righteousness, which we contemplate regularly. It is very interesting that, that God is considered holy primarily in the scripture account because he is so different, so unique from everything else in creation. And that has to do with some of those incommunicable attributes that we talked about earlier, that blue part of the chart, but it also has to do with the fact that he is love, and it also has to do with the fact that he is perfect and righteous in all of his ways, and it also has to do with all of those green characteristics being complete and total and beautiful and perfect within God. I, I know we watched a bit from the Bible Project last week, and we're going to do that again because they have a little video here. It's about six minutes long that talks about, um, about what holiness means. And we're going to watch the whole thing. And I know that that's not uh, normally what we do, but that's, that's what we're going to do uh, today. And so I would invite you to, to watch this video that comes up, and then we'll come back together to finish our talk about what God's holiness and perfection have to do with us. <laughs> 